Patriot Prime Reviews is a channel for adult collectors and may not be suitable for children under 13 years of age. Viewer discretion is advised. This video is sponsored by ToyHacks.com. They're your one-stop shop for reproduction decals for your vintage G1 Transformers and upgrade decals for your modern bots. Weaponry for your figures from the Toy Hacks Armory and great looking backdrops for your display from Toy Stages. So check out ToyHacks.com and make your collection stand out from the rest. And tell them Patriot Prime sent you. The featured bot in this video is the BW11 Mad Panther Warrior, a bootleg masterpiece Cheetor that I just got in from ShowZStore.com. And this name cracks me up in a couple of ways. Mad Panther Warrior sounds like a cheap cologne that I used to wear back in the 90s when I was clubbing. And plus, it's Cheetor. He's a cheetah, not a panther. And it's also called the Boutique Model, which also sounds like a cheap cologne or perfume. Boutique Model. So, that is just, it's funny. But taking a quick look at the packaging, we've got the Mad Panther Warrior there in cheetah mode. And in robot mode, side of the box, Mad Panther Warrior with the cat eyes. The same here on top and the other side. Back of the packaging shows the Mad Panther Warrior in a variety of poses, both in robot and cheetah mode. So now, without further ado, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and let's get this Mad Panther Warrior, who I'm going to call Cheetor for the rest of the review, out of this packaging and check him out. And welcome to Patriot Prime Reviews. Now, first off, I want to apologize if you're hearing my air conditioner running in the background. It is like 400 degrees in my upstairs office here at the house. I had to turn that thing on because it is miserable up here. So anyway, once you get Cheetor all opened up and out of the packaging, you'll see he does come with two different cheetah head sculpts. You've got a kind of a snarky looking face right here and a scared face. And those are actually really well detailed and I love the fiber optic whiskers he has. Those are really cool. We'll get into those more later on. He also comes with two different robot faces. And as you can see, they got some great light piping. We'll take a look at those later on as well. And he's got two communicators, one for cheetah mode, one for robot mode. And these look really good, very detailed. Though I do wish they had some paint in the center because in the show, they were green in the middle, but it's still pretty cool. And I will show you how they attach to Cheetor right here. He's got, if you look right there, there's a little slot on his upper arm. Just get that on there, peg it in place if I can find the slot. So there you go, you've got Cheetor with his communicator on his arm. So a nice little option if you wish to display it that way. Now, I want to stress that I do not own an original Masterpiece Cheetor, so I'm going in on this figure fresh, nothing to compare it with. This is my first time experiencing any type of Masterpiece Cheetor, and I must say this one looks really, really good. Lots of great detail all over, though you do see a lot of robot mode with the Cheetah, but I think that's every Cheetah Cheetor that's ever been put out. That just he suffers in beast mode but taking a close look at the face he's spot on to how he looked on the show i dig it the mouth can open and close and like i said i really like the fiber optic whiskers i don't know how long those will survive during transformations but it's still pretty cool and i just i love the details on him taking a closer look at the spots the spots came to have a digitized look to them, and from what I understand, that's so it matches the animation of the television show. So that's not my camera, that's the way the spots look. 
great collaring all around. I love the white in spots there for the stomach area that lead up into the lower face. And I mean, he just, he looks good, but you know, other than aside from the robot parts and the gaps. Now right here on the back, this section right here detaches into a weapon and it doesn't really peg in really tight. If you look right there, you can see a tab. It's supposed to slot in right there, but it just does not. So you mess with it, it's going to pop off. Now this cheetah mode has lots of posability. The arms can go out, they can go in. It will separate at the shoulder if you're not careful. There is a bend at the elbow. There is a bend there at the paw. It can rotate. The head can rotate around though. It's a little loose. So you try to pose him up like that, it will drop down if you fool with it too much. The jaw can open and close. The head can rotate. It can look side to side. Here on the back legs, they can go out very tight. They can go in. There is a knee bend. There is an ankle bend. There is a little foot pivot. The tail here can wag, though it, when you move it, it looks like it, it's broken. But still pretty good. Not bad at all. Now let's go into these uh, different faces. This is your basic Cheetor face. Looks really good. And let's see, open it up. Great paint applications. You can see the pink there inside the mouth and the teeth. Now to swap out the heads, just pull. And it pops right off of that little peg right there. Pick you another head. Let's do the snarky head. Peg that in. So you've got that going on. Now, one thing I've noticed with these head sculpts is some of the eyes don't look right. They're not centered real good. I think the worst one is the scared head. It looks like one eyeball is looking down, the other one's straight at you. It like <laughs> it looks like he took a whack on the head. But you can actually switch the eyes out. You get right in here inside the head, get your thumbnail in. You can pull the eyes out and switch with another. So let's go ahead and do this one. See if it make, makes a big difference here. Yeah, that, that looks terrible. So yeah, the eyes, eh, they could be better, at least on the scared face, the snarky face here and the regular Cheetor head doesn't look bad at all. Okay, put those eyes back in this one. So another neat option that you can do, go ahead and peg that head back in. See, it's on a peg right here, but that swivels around, so it's kind of hard to line up just right. So that's pretty much it for Cheetor in his cheetah mode. Let's go ahead and get him transformed into robot mode. And the first thing we're going to do is this section right here that I was talking about, you're going to pull this off. This transforms into his gun. Let me show you how this pegs in real quick. This gold part pegs in here, and as I showed earlier, there's a little tab that's supposed to tab in right there. It just doesn't happen with mine. So to transform this into his blaster, take this gold section, bring it up, then rotate it around, and then you're gonna take the tail, fold it up and under, and there is a little hole right there that you'll match up to that peg, slot that in, bring these panels up and over and you can rotate these out of the way. That makes a little shield. Get that folded back. So now you have his tail blaster, a nice throwback to the original generation one toy. And speaking of generation one toy, or excuse me, his original toy, let me go ahead and put this together real quick because I actually brought out the generation one or original Beast Wars figure to compare him to in Cheetah Mode. So there is your Mad Panther Warrior with the original Beast Wars Cheetor. This isn't the Walmart reissue, that is the original one right there. And then we have the Netflix Kingdom Cheetor. So this one's got a lot of good size on it. So let me go ahead and get that tail back off. We'll continue on with transformation. Next thing we'll do is right here, there is his gut gun. You wanna go ahead and just pull that out. It pegs in, there's a little slot right there that lines up to that peg 
right there on top. And how you transform this is you just open it up right here, bring the barrel out, and it's kind of got a little catch right here, so you want to be very careful. Snap that into place. You've got the handle you want to pull out right here. And there is the gut gun, something I forgot to show on this blaster here. Quickly transform this back. It also has a handle right there. Go ahead and push this down. If I can get it. If all else fails, you bring in your spudger. It's always important to have your spudger. So bring the handle down, bring this up and over. And it's actually got two slots I forgot to show off. One slot right there for the handle, the other, the little peg. And there we go. And like I said, we'll come back to the weapons later on. So now let's go ahead and finish robot mode here. We're going to extend the legs all the way out. Take the back leg cheetah paws, bring those down and just fold those into the leg like so. Bring the foot down and flip out the heel spur. So once you bring this down, you've got this little panel here. Just close that up, completely forming the robot shin. Go ahead and do the same for the other side. And make sure you get this all the way down because you've got those little spikes right there. Get those out of the way so you can fold the other little spikes around. So there we go. Go ahead and bring this panel down and rotate the waist. And right here at the legs, bring the leg around because you want to make sure the gold section is facing forward. Bring that over and around. And there we go. So that more or less takes care of the legs. And how you know you got the legs right, the ankles will tilt in like they're supposed to. Now, you're going to take the cheetah shoulders, just move those up out of the way, push the head back, so you release this section here, and going back to the head, make sure that is all the way collapsed in like so. Open up the arms, bring these all the way out and around. Take this little blue section here, bring this out all the way, and now, right up here you're going to bring up the robot head and you're going to rotate this whole section around let's see because you're going to fold the cheetah head into this gap and what you really want to watch out for is those whiskers so you're going to go ahead and collapse all of this in see it is a mess this is actually the joints are really tight on this so I want to make sure I'm not really I don't want to overstress anything but right here on the back you've got this little section here connected to the neck make sure that is pressed down flat against the inside section here you've got Cheetor actually I lucked out see how the whiskers folded up inside the chest you want that happening there and then just collapse all this on top of each other. Make sure this little blue section here, it's got a little tab right there that you wanna make sure it tabs in right below Cheetor's neck. This was kind of a pain for me. I get to line up just right. <laughs> I can't get it. Okay, now that I've got the head section tapped in, we're gonna go back down here to the waist. And I was wrong here with rotating this around because what you wanna do, let me go ahead and rotate this back is you've got this little section right here is you're gonna unpeg this section right here behind him at, at the hips. You're gonna unpeg that and rotate that section around. And then you've got that little slot that's gonna line up with that little peg right there line that up and snap that into place just like so and of course the legs are already in the right position where I had those turned already then you're gonna take his little loincloth thing slide that back or push it into the body 
and just rest it right there on his crotch. And now what we're gonna do is flip the shoulders around here and on the back of the figure, you're gonna see these slots right there. They're gonna line up to the slots here. So you got tabs and slots, get that lined up, get those in place, get the other one in place. There we go. Now on the back, what you're gonna do is you've got the cheetah legs and let's see how these work. You've got this one that's got a peg sticking out right there. You're gonna rotate this one around so the peg is facing the back of the figure and you're gonna match it up to the hole in this leg and just peg those together, kinda of in a crisscross, which is very show accurate. And of course that unpegs everything else on the back. Let me get that cleaned up. There we go, almost there. Now here for the forearms, you're gonna take these panels and just swing these down and back over the arm. There is a slot right there that is gonna line up with a peg on the forearm. Go ahead and get that slotted into place. You know, for a bootleg figure messing around with this guy, I'm not really afraid of breaking him because the plastic quality feels really good. So get that lined up, get that in place there. You'll know, take these shoulders, kind of bring these up. And that is one problem I have with this figure is the little shoulder sections here. They do not really want to lock into place at all. You just kind of bring them in. Wait a second, let's rotate the shoulder around. We'll hide hide that screw hole now let's see I'm trying to see I wonder nope I thought I could rotate that around but that's not going to happen so the shoulders not a big fan of those shoulder joints they just they just don't hold really good but anyway there you go there is cheetor in robot mode stand up for me buddy so robot mode isn't too bad i mean he looks like cheetor he's even got the maximal symbol right there on the forehead great paint applications all over he's got the little discs inside the shoulders got some nice paint applications in inside those shoulder pylons as well I mean, I could clean him up a little bit better. This is actually my first time really fooling with the robot mode. I wanted to save everything for the review for my first impressions and first impressions are decent. I just, I wish the shoulders would lock in place. Maybe if I could just kind of manipulate that somehow. Of course, once I get him posed, he's going on the shelf. It's probably not going to be a big issue whatsoever, but I wish those would lock in and there's just no way I don't see any way that they can do it so kind of a bummer there now articulation Cheetor's head is on a, a hinge so he can look way up his head can rotate side to side and it's got a little bit of a ball joint so he can kind of look around a little bit he's got a faux cheeto, cheetah face there for the chest arms can rotate at the shoulder, they can bend at the elbow, rotate at the bicep. There is a wrist rotation and finger articulation. So that's really cool. Waist rotation, legs can go out, but they're very tight. They go forward, they can go back. There is a knee bend, and as I showed earlier, there is an ankle tilt. So lots of great articulation. My biggest complaint, I'm still having problems with it. As you can see, is those shoulders so let's go ahead and get his weaponry stand up for me so we'll take the gut gun first let's go ahead and take a look at his hand it's your typical masterpiece hand you've got the handle here with the pegs just kind of line that up with the slot there on the fist wrap the fingers around if i can get it there we go so there he is holding the gut gun, and I guess if I can get the arm 
just right here. So there's that. Then we have his other gun and playing around with this guy earlier, the easiest way to position the other gun is go ahead and get the hands opened up, take the tail section, unfold that, put it in his hand and then wrap the tail around because it's kind of hard to get the hand around the tail section. So there he is, and as you can see, it still didn't work. Hold on. And there you go. We've got Cheetor all armed and ready for battle. And of course, he does have his little communicator here. You can attach this on his upper bicep, just like it was in the television show. And let's go ahead and look at the face sculpts. We do have two extra face sculpts here. Let me bring those out. And this is your basic Cheetor face. I apologize for hitting the camera. And I do believe it does have that great light piping. Get that lamp right behind there. I love that. Always appreciate good light piping. Now to change the faces out, just kind of pull up and out. Got a big old light piping section right there. Love the paint applications on this. Looks really, really good. So there's your basic Cheetor face. Then we have, that uh, looks like his angry face. And then we have, I'm not sure. It just looks, okay, maybe that's just a stern face. Okay, yeah, he doesn't have an open mouth there. That's a stern face, smiley face, and an angry face. So we'll just stick with the regular face and it attaches, you just, slide it right in and there's a little peg right there that catches on the forehead so there you go so the bw11 mad panther warrior i dig it he's he's a pretty decent cheetor figure he's got his flaws especially with the shoulders right there that just will not stay in place i may take some floor polish or see what i can do to tighten that up but I'm going to have him displayed on my shelf in robot mode. So I think he looks pretty awesome. And now for some quick size comparisons. Here is the BW-11 Mad Panther Warrior. With the original Beast Wars Cheetor. War for Cybertron Trilogy Netflix Cheetor. And Kingdom Optimus Primal. The BW-11 Mad Panther Warrior is actually a pretty decent Beast Wars Cheetor. I only have a few complaints with the figure. Cheetah mode looks okay. Lot of robot junk showing, lots of gaps showing, and I wish the tail gun section would peg in better. Plus, he's got some loose joints and those wonky eyes for the cheetah faces. Robot mode, on the other hand, looks fantastic i've got no complaints with robot mode whatsoever aside from those shoulder joints that i wish were a little tighter or would at least clip in other than that i think this cheetor looks great and is going to look awesome up there on my beast wars display so there you go guys the bw11 mad panther warrior boutique model so does a BW-11 Mad Panther Warrior Masterpiece Cheetor belong in your collection? Well, if you're a Beast Wars fan or a Cheetor fan, absolutely. I love this guy. He is much better than I was expecting. He's actually really good plastic quality. I had no problem whatsoever transforming him other than, you know, just trying to get some things tabbed into place. And that happens with the uh, regular Hasbro releases. Uh, as I said in the review early on, it's the cheetah mode that I think suffers the most. He looks good as far as the face in the front, but he's very gappy, and you see a lot of the robot parts showing through. Of course, that's the same with any Cheetor that you have. But robot mode is spectacular. This figure has all the personality of Cheetor. He looks just like he did in the television show. The only issue I have is with those loose shoulder joints, and I think that's something I can easily fix. So yeah, if you're in the market for a Masterpiece-style Cheetor without the Masterpiece price, 
I'd say pick this guy up. And as I said earlier, I got him from showzstore.com, took about two weeks, and I am really impressed. I dig this guy. Now, guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to click that bell icon to get notified when I upload new videos. Also, if you're in any position to help out the channel, I do have a new super thanks button, thanks to YouTube, and I also offer channel memberships. And I have to give a huge shout out to all my current channel members because it's support like yours that helps keep this channel going. Once again, guys, this is Patriot Prime, signing out. Hurrah!